<laughs> yes. He's walking with me. I can't depend on you. Hello, guys. Hello. You're here to see Chris this morning. Yes, we'd like him to have a look at our cat. Okay, a little kitty cat. Can I have a little look? Yes, certainly. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little unusual. This is definitely a first for the Bondi Clinic. That is just... That's made my day, made my week. Donna and Amanda from the animal rescue group Lottle have brought in a very unusual patient for Chris to examine. We wanted Dr Chris to give her her first health check. We thought she's a very special animal. We wanted her to see a very special vet. So, and we thought it'd be a, a lovely surprise for him as well. All right, so Zambia, right? That's correct, yes. Okay. <laughs> we get a lot of cats through the door here. I mean, Persians, Himalayans, Burmese, Burmans, we get a lot. Not this kind of cat, though. You are just a little bit special. Come here, come on. This is about as good as it gets. I kind of thought we'd seen almost everything here at the Bondi Clinic. No, we've never had a lion before. It's just something else. Come on, Bubba. Let's go. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Alana is arriving with seven-month-old Kelly. We noticed that she had some little holes um, in the top of her mouth. Um, there's a bit of blood around them. So I really have no clue what's going on or, or what she's done, but it looks like it might be something to worry about. I'm going to fix your mouth. Yeah, we'll make you all better. Callie is definitely my little baby. Um, she's spoiled beyond belief, <laughs> so I want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with her. So what's happening? She likes to chew lots of things. Yeah. She's always chewing sticks yeah. and rocks and that. Um, but I'm not sure if she's punctured something or got like a hole from okay. chewing or something. Sure. So I'm just going to have a look in her mouth and see if we can work out exactly what's causing this problem. Oh, it doesn't look good. It's only when I open up her mouth that I notice that her canine teeth are sitting far back and they're actually digging their way up into her palate and that's not normal at all. Those bottom canine teeth, they're actually not sitting where they should be and what they're doing is they're burrowing up into her palate mm -hmm. and they're making those little ulcers and if we don't do anything about it those canine teeth will just progressively burrow through her palate uh, and eventually in the worst case scenario they can almost make holes right up into her nasal cavity. That's pretty bad. Yeah it's pretty serious if we get to that stage. The best thing we can do is try and treat her now so that it's not going to progress and end up with a serious surgical problem. If we don't treat it, it's going to cause her lifelong pain, discomfort, difficulty eating. It's something we really need to treat straight away. It's OK. Mm. She's just a little baby, so I want to make sure we can do whatever we can to, to help her. Do the best. The name's very African. I should have known, really, didn't I? <laughs> a surprise for Chris has been brought in by Donna and Amanda. Yes, it is an African name. They're from Lottle, a specialised welfare home for retired zoo and circus animals. I think Dr Chris was extremely surprised when he saw Sammy. No, he didn't. No. Oh, no, trust me, he did. He was not expecting a lion cub to come out of that little carrier. So. Oh. I guess the question is, <laughs> how? How do you have her and, and what is she doing in here now? Her mother, uh, Tansa, uh, was acting a bit strange with her. Being the first time mum, she was picking her up a lot, pacing back and forth in the den, wanting to take her out into the big enclosure. So just, she just showed quite anxious behaviour, did she? Yeah, very anxious. Yeah. 
She seemed a little stressed. We, we just got too worried, so we thought it was in her best interest to be hand-read yeah, with us. absolutely. When Zambi's mother threatened to harm her, Donna and Amanda became the Cubs' surrogate mums. There's no doubt that Donna has done the right thing in taking Zambi away from her mother. It's not ideal, but the reality is, kept in that situation, the risk of injury just becomes too great. My hope is that you've got her away from mum in time and, and we can transition her into, I guess, her, her new life now. Yes, yes. The first priority really is to establish that she is healthy. She's gone through a lot, so ensuring she's at a good point now can set her up for the rest of her life. Hi, this is Kelly. <gasps> And Alana. Hello. <laughs> At Sash, seven-month-old Callie has a big problem inside her mouth. Alana noticed that she had some little craters on her top palate. Lisa is hoping specialist veterinary dentist Nadine Fiani can find a solution to help the staffy. It seems like her lower canines are not occluding in the way that they should. Oh, They're goodness. just not lining up. But I'd love your opinion on what we can do. Let's have a look inside. Let's open up that little mouth. Wow. You see the dents right in the roof of her mouth? That certainly does not look right at all. Wow. So this this is a, it's a pretty nasty problem. You're absolutely right, Lisa. The first thing I could see was that her two lower canines, her big fang teeth, instead of sitting in this sort of angle, they're actually sitting a little too upright. They're standing up. And what that means is when Callie closes her mouth, those two fang teeth are now poking up into the roof of her mouth and they're causing dents. They're causing indentations or trauma to the roof of her mouth. Is there something we can do to... to help her? She's very lucky. I think we can probably put on some doggy braces. Um, <laughs> doggy braces, sure. I did not think that they were going to say that she needed braces. I'd never ever heard of a dog with braces. So is it like human braces? Or? They're, they're a little bit similar to what people can have sometimes on their teeth. We're going to move her upper canines back and once there's a bit more room we'll try and shift the problematic lower canines out of the way so that she's not having that painful problem anymore. We're not trying to make her win a beauty contest, we just want her to be comfortable. Yeah, I don't want her to be in pain, so... Oh, that's good. She's the most loved member of our family, so anything that she needs, I will do for her. Kelly will be a pioneer and one of the first dogs ever to have braces fitted at Sash. Kelly's provided us the perfect Absolutely. case for it. And the beauty of, of this procedure is that it's mm. completely non-invasive. As horrible as Kelly's problem is, the exciting thing is we can put braces on her to fix this. Hey, you're going to get braces on very Thanks soon. Stage one of Callie's orthodontic treatment will take place later this afternoon. For now, it's time for Alana to say her goodbyes. We'll see you soon. It is pretty amazing that we can do this for her. I'm sure some people are going to think I've lost my mind putting braces on my dog. Um, and they might sort of think I'm just doing it so they look pretty. But we're going to do this so she isn't in any pain anymore. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> I think this is the only line I'd let bite my finger. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris needs to examine Zambi. After being rejected by her mum, the little line cub is being hand raised by Donna and Amanda. They need to make sure she's healthy. Her heart sounds good. Oh, excellent. Yeah, heart sounds no nice, and, <laughs> nice and strong. It's a really critical time right now because without the antibodies coming in from her mother's milk, she is at risk of infection. And that can be from bacterial infections or it can be from viruses. So what I would actually like to do today is give her a vaccination. Okay, her first vaccine. Yeah. We're really throwing out the rule book by giving Zambi her vaccination at four weeks of age, but I wouldn't figure myself if she got an infection now that could have been prevented by a vaccination. It's a risk we have to take. I'll give her my pacifying finger. <laughs> Good girl, good girl. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's Yay. your sapling. Good girl. Oh. Okay, so that's going to make us a little bit more relaxed about her being protected from infection. Yes. The other thing she needs 
is something you can't give in a bottle or in a needle, and that's socialisation. With all this focus on how healthy Zambia is medically, it's easy to forget her social needs, which are just as important. She needs to learn to be a lion. If she's not in a pride, because she's not with a mother, that's where it becomes a bit tricky for her. But what you can do, and this isn't easy, what you can do is actually give her a pride of her own. She can't go into lions because that would probably tear her apart. But what we can do is try to find animals that will accept her yet still have that, that team environment. What I'm talking about are dogs. Yes. I think we might have the dog. Let's give her a go. I know, I know which one you're thinking of, Sabi. Yeah. What's Sabi? She's a Labrador. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's, you know, she keeps everyone else in line at home. Yeah. So, I mean, we could give it a go. When Amanda tells me that her dog is a Labrador, my eyes light up. We are talking about the most perfect surrogate out there, mainly because they're obliging, they're understanding, they're patient, and they're very loving. It's a little bit crazy. I know it sounds a bit weird, but there are situations where this has been done around the world, and, and it has worked very well. But there's no guarantees. No. She could turn her nose up and say, nope. Yeah. Not dealing with that. Giving Zambi a surrogate mum in the form of a Labrador could potentially be the greatest thing for her, but sometimes these things don't go to plan. I need to be out there to make sure this doesn't go badly. The idea is that she's going to thrash around, she'll build up like a gator. At the Australian Reptile Park, operations manager Tim Faulkner and his staff are preparing for an extremely dangerous capture. Well, let's um, be safe and... OK, we'll meet you around the front, guys. The park's keepers have recently noticed Atomic Betty, a massive reticulated python, has a large lump on her back. Tim must catch her to have a closer look at the worrying growth. There is no easy way to catch Atomic Betty. You'll know Three, what to do. Two, two, one. Oh. Good boys. In. Get yeah, that coil off. Good, Head up. Good, Head up. Good, OK. Everyone grab on. Feed her out. Feed her out. Feed her out. Atomic Betty is a member of the largest python species on Earth. Now, at her size, a bite, teeth are a centimetre long, serious cuts, and if she gets a coil around you, you'll hear ribs pop. Watch that head, mate. After a tense struggle, they've managed to capture the massive six and a half metre python. OK, so bring that bag in. Tail's going to go in first. Start to bring the bag a bit closer, guys. Three, two, one, go. Beauty. Now wrap her up. Atomic Betty is one of the reptile park favourites. To think that something's wrong with her, well, I don't like it and it really worries me. Excuse us, guys. Cheers, thank you. Atomic Betty is being moved to a safe area for examination. Tim is aware the python is now extremely agitated and will be ready to strike when the opportunity presents itself. The first year I ever caught her, I went in and I was about a metre away and she just launched at me. And she got a couple of teeth through one of the keeper's nails and it was horrible, blood everywhere. So we always have to be aware of that and manage her very, very safely. OK, now there's only four of us, so let's go up and out. You're good, mate. Just watch it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. You got her, mate? Yep. Just yep. take her over to your left there. Yeah, yeah like we can go yep. down so she's on the ground. OK, that's nice. Oh, look at it. Yeah. OK, so that's pretty serious. Yep. I'm really worried about that, mate. I can see that and feel that there's bone. I mean, and it's raised, so she needs to go to the vet. All right, guys, let's get her back in now, softly, gently. Because she's going to go. Oh, no. Good, that's almost in. You two boys on the head? Yep. Atomic Betty's never been to the vets before. She's not the type of animal that we'd take off site and get out in a vet clinic, but, you know, this is serious enough that I need to do it. Yeah. Oh. Hey. OK, that's good. She's good. What I really don't want is bad news. Atomic Betty is a beautiful big snake. I mean, surgery would be just a nightmare. Hey, 
How are you going? Oh, good, Chris. Hi, Chris. Got some of the relatives over here. Huh? It is. Thanks for coming out. We yeah, really right. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no worries. Chris is at the Lottle Animal Rescue Centre in Western Sydney. He has a left field idea on how to help four week old Zambi. All right, should we go and introduce little Zambi to the new mum? Yes, yes, let's, let's, do. let's right. do it. The tiny cub is being hand raised by Donna and Amanda, but she needs to learn how to become a lion. My plan is to do something that seems a little bit strange at first. We're going to try to give Zambi a new mother in the form of a Labrador. What I'm thinking is, I'd love to meet our new mum first without Zambi being around. Uh -huh. So something I want to try that I think is going to ease this introduction. Why don't you take Chris to meet Zabi? I'll take Andy baby. Oh, come on, right, Which way is she? There, there. She's just up here. Oh. <laughs> Who's going to be, huh? There's no shortage of volunteers for the surrogate role. Here she is, here. She's, she's in there? Yep. But one special lab has been singled out. Calling Sabi. Sabi? Good girl. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. Labradors are known for their maternal instincts, and Chris has big plans for Sabi. The hope here is that we can create the feeling of a pride of lions. How we're going to do that, though, I haven't told the girls. There is a bit of a trick here. Dogs make up their mind about things as much on the scent of them as they do on the sight of them. Okay. So, uh -huh. that's where this comes in handy. So what we're going to do is take Zabi's scent yep. from her body and put it on Zambi. So okay. when she smells Zambi, she's going to go, ooh, that cologne is strangely familiar. This is the best part of she's the day. She's loving it. it. Huh? This whole motherhood <laughs> thing, it's not seeming too bad, is it? Okay. Let's have the towel started. Oh, wow. So the towel is now. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. Potent. It's rank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Donna, I think we're ready. OK, so my plan is, this is covered in sabi scent. Oh. What I'm going to do is rub this all over Zambi. Uh -huh. So we're essentially trying to fool Sabi into thinking Zambi is a liner door. A liner door, I love it. Part lion, part Labrador. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's all right. You don't like that? <laughs> Zambi isn't too sure about suddenly smelling like a Labrador, but Chris is hoping his gamble will work. Right now, all the groundwork has been laid. We have Zambi, who smells like a dog. We have Sabi, who looks like being the perfect mother. I'm excited about how this goes, but at the same time, I'm a little bit wary. This was my idea. If this doesn't go well, I could be leaving here in a hurry. All right, sweetheart, I'm gonna go to sleep. At SASH, seven-month-old Callie is about to undergo the first of a series of complex procedures to fix her misaligned teeth. Here we go. If we were to leave Callie's mouth as it is, it's only going to get worse. And what will happen is those two lower canines, those two lower fangs, are just going to keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper into the roof of her mouth. Wow, it's quite the hole. What we're looking at here are, is the trauma that's happening in Callie's mouth. So these two dents in the roof of her mouth are caused by the uh, lower canine. Every time she closes her mouth, they poke straight into the roof of her mouth. So that's really uncomfortable. So our aim is to eventually be able to move these two canines outward so that they're sitting on the side of her jaw rather than inside the roof of her mouth. The first step today is applying braces. We're going to cement on some metal buttons onto her teeth. It's, it's a very delicate procedure, and where they go is, is very, very important. We just need to let that sit for a minute. The buttons will hold elastics that will start moving the problem teeth to their correct position. We have to be very, very careful with how much tension we apply to these teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
If we put too much tension, if we try and move that tooth too, too quickly, it could end up killing it, and that's not what we want. That could lead to a whole host of problems. So we have to take our time, we have to measure everything, and we have to make sure what we're doing is spot on. There we go. Perfect. Stage one of this long and complicated process is now over. I think the, the buttons and the chains look great. They, they don't feel like they're going to come off, but she is a puppy and we have to be so careful with her so she's not allowed to chew on anything because they, they can come off quite easily. Oh, it's all right. Callie will sleep off her sedation and hopefully be able to go home with her owner Alana later today. Hello, mate. Afternoon, Timmy. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? What's happening? Near the Reptile Park in Wyoming, Tim and the team have arrived at the Green Cross Vets Clinic with Atomic Betty. I've oh, got her. Yep, good. The 11-year-old python has a large lump on her back. Tim is hoping Dr. Peter Nosworthy can determine what's causing the massive swelling. So we're mid-back with this. Do we have to yep. get her all the way out, do you uh, think? I think she'll be better up there because it's just better for us with restraint. Okay, now keep coming a little. Here we go. It comes up now, Pete. That's it. So once that's flat, let's keep her there. She got a bony bump. What is it? Oh, what's well, bone? Well and truly. What's your first? Listen, oh, well, first impression's a worry. Touching Betty's lump, I'm concerned that she suffered a fractured vertebrae in her back and that there's the potential to her to be uh, paralysed from that point backwards. We need to have a look at the spine to see whether we've got a straight line vertebrae for a start, that there's no disarticulation. Yes. Uh, appreciate that uh, uh, if that's the case, then we've got impingement on the, uh, on the cord. Yes. Uh, and from there backwards, we're going to have nerve issues. So what are we going to do now? Yeah, I want to take an x-ray, if okay. that's all right with yeah, you Yeah, sure. We might just carry her through while she's out. Yeah, if you're, okay. if you're up for that, that's yep. good. Right, we've got the weight back here. I'm really nervous, my stomach's in knots, and that's because the worst case could unfold. Bit more, Mickey, a little bit more, mate. Okay, that's us. Yep, we're good there. But if these results are bad and she has a broken back, that could end in paralysis, and that's the end of Betty. We don't want that to happen. X rays happening, guys. One, two, go. Hey, do you want us to turn her a little? Yeah. Atomic Betty's x-rays are underway. OK, good. She's done? She's done. The six and a half metre reticulated python has a worrying lump on her back. Tim's concerned Betty might have broken her spine. Atomic Betty's a really important part of the Australian reptile park. She is so loved that for anything to be wrong would be horrible. Uh, we, we haven't got a lot to smile about, Tim. She has a crack in a vertebrae. Okay. Okay, you can see this is bone. Yep. Uh, that bone should be sitting low. You can see how the, the vertebrae come up there. That should be sitting. Same as this, they're all sitting next door to each other. Yep. The one's sitting up in the air. Yep. Which means that we have got some pressure on the underside of the spinal cord. So, Pete, now, are we still looking at a real risk of paralysis? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. We are looking at a risk of paralysis. If it's left to its own devices, it's left calm, quiet, it may well cement up beautifully. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's like having a fused joint then. Yep. Uh, that would be what we're after. Yep. But it will take six months for the bones to heal and the team will have to follow very strict instructions so the python isn't paralysed. No climbing, rest, small meals and the pain relieving drugs. Well, I'm not sure whether that's good news or bad news. I guess it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been worse. I'm really happy that we brought her here today because until we got those x-rays, we couldn't know the severity of the injury. So, you know, we could have been on a knife's edge where she was about to become paralysed and maybe by not feeding her big items now and the couple of things we're going to implement, we saved her. OK, let's go. At SASH, pioneer patient Callie has recovered from her anaesthetic after having a set of doggy braces fitted. Come on. 
Specialist veterinary dentist Nadine has given her the all clear to go home with owner Alana. That's your mummy coming to get you. Callie is doing amazingly well this afternoon. You wouldn't even imagine that she was anaesthetised only a couple of hours ago. She's right out of that anaesthetic, no problems at all. Oh my goodness. So much for sedation. <laughs> I cannot believe that my dog has braces. I think it is so funny, but hopefully that really, really helps her. So I'm pretty excited. Hello. 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 <laughs> You're beautiful. Kelly's next visit will be in four weeks. Oh, thank you for that. That was lovely. I really do hope that we start seeing that upper canine tooth, that upper fang tooth start to move back gradually and to do so in a slow and steady fashion and that we don't end up with any complications from it. Bye, good luck. <laughs> A bit slower when you get to the bottom there, boys. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim and the keepers are carefully returning Atomic Betty to her enclosure. She's heavy. The six and a half metre python will need to be handled with care to avoid any more damage to her fractured spine. It's been a big day for Betty and keepers, but now we know what's wrong with the lump, we know what we've got to do to fix it. Betty needs to get back into her enclosure and just settle down. She needs some rest. Okay, that's it. All right, Betty. I think at least for another year, she doesn't need to be handled. Uh, we'll reduce the food items, so hopefully that's enough to get her through. Righto, darling. All you gotta do is get better now. So just remember to take it nice and slow. Obviously, Zambi's never really seen one like Sabi before, and Sabi's never seen one like Zambi before, so we'll just try to go in nice and slowly. At the Lottle Animal Rescue Headquarters in suburban Sydney, Chris is about to find out if his bizarre adoption plan will work. And just be nice and positive, hey. He's hoping Sabi the Labrador will become mum to this four-week-old lion cub. I am anxious about this. It could work one way or the other, and Sabi could not want anything to do with the cub at all, or her maternal instincts might kick in, hopefully, and it could all turn out beautifully. There we go. Oh, just nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just licks, just licks. There we go. There's certainly no, no stress or anxiety there. That's, that's a full-on first meeting, but that is a... a successful gentle, first gentle, meeting. Gentle, gentle. <laughs> She's just little. She's just little. I could tell that Sabi had love to give, but just how much love to give, that was a surprise. But what I find amazing is that she's, she's looked at Zambi and hasn't seen a lion, she's seen one of hers, almost, that, that needs help. Oh, good girl. I mean, this is a fantastic result, Chris. It's extraordinary. I think Chris's idea with the scented cloth helped out lots. She just jumped straight in there and just started being a mother to her. So, as a first meeting, that really couldn't have gone any better. Sabi and Zambi will spend the next few months living together. The hope is Sabi will teach Zambi how to live in a pack and set her up for the rest of her life. After such an enthusiastic first meeting between Sabi and Zambi, it'd be rude not to come back and see how this relationship develops. Being sleepy. There we go. At SASH, the second stage of Little Kelly's marathon orthodontic program is about to begin. It's time to get these braces off. If the braces have done their job, Kelly's upper canine teeth should have started to move back. Oh my god. All right, it came. Oh, beautiful. Callie still has those little ulcers in the roof of her mouth, but it's looking pretty good and no longer causing her any pain or discomfort. The next step is to use dental putty to construct a temporary plate that will start pushing Callie's lower canines clear of the roof of her mouth. 
We want to make sure that everything fits together and that we shift the teeth as quickly and as efficiently as possible without causing any problems later on. Little Callie is now more than halfway through the pioneering program to correct her teeth. Yes, that's very, very nice. It will be another four weeks before she's back in to see if the plate has worked. Now we'll just have to wait and see if the teeth shift like they should be. Inside the Bondi Clinic, Cassie is losing the battle with her bulldog George. Come on, come on, hey! But the two-year-old might not be so enthusiastic about his visit to the vet if he knew just what was in store. I came to see Dr Chris because I'm concerning about finally dissexing him because uh, he's getting out of control. I love his personality, it's just um, I want him to calm down. It's just too much. Hey, how are you? Hi, good. Oh, Georgie. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> He's very excited like to, come to see through. you. Clearly, yeah. clearly he does. <laughs> it's been a few years since I first saw George as a puppy. In that time, the little boy has grown up. Wow, OK, he's a man in a hurry. In this one. Oh. This is that one. Come on. He's a totally different story now. Does this have anything to do with why you're here? Yeah, yeah be good. Um, He's getting a bit out of control, though. When I take him for a walk, he takes forever because he sniffs every single tree. And uh, I'm not sure if I dissect him, he's going to change because um, it's not enjoyable to take him for a walk anymore. There's no doubt that George has an excess energy problem, but it's the engine that's driving this beast that is the true issue here. Or is that engines, two of them, between his legs. The problem's right before our eyes. They're hard to ignore. <laughs> They're massive, aren't they? <laughs> They're really big. They're really big. Yeah. So the issue is that they're filling up his body with testosterone. Yeah. And testosterone has an interesting effect on men. Um, so for him, what it's doing is essentially giving him this, this drive and this need to be everywhere at every time and, and be in people's faces because he wants to be the dog that everyone knows and everyone loves and because he connects that attention and that focus of everyone with him being a successful male alpha dog. So we need to do something. Yeah. There you go, Callie. Today is a huge milestone for courageous Kelly. You're a good girl. After weeks of intense treatment at SASH, the staffy pup is back for what's hopefully her final procedure. We're going to be removing her orthodontic appliance today, um, and hopefully that'll be it. We'll be done. That's a good girl. The first step is removing Kelly's plate. We're going to score the appliance itself, and then we're actually going to crack it off bit by bit. And we do that very carefully because we don't want to hurt the teeth underneath it. Today's the big day. Kelly is having her plate removed. So excited to see how it turns out. Oh, there we go. A whole lot just came off. Thank you. Fantastic. So we'll just get the last bits and pieces off. We are going to just make sure that everything's fitting together OK. There we go. I'm always nervous at this part of the, the procedure because it's really the, the moment of truth to see if all, all the work that we've done has actually been successful. So fingers crossed, our teeth fit together properly. Oh, beautiful. So we can see immediately that now her lower canines are on the outside of her upper canines, which they weren't before. Previously, they were just sitting right in there inside her palate, inside the roof of her mouth, and they were causing all manner of trauma. So that's no longer the case. The braces, the plate, everything has done its work. Our lower canines are now in completely the right spot. So they're not going to poke through the roof of her mouth. But most importantly, she'll be very, very comfortable. 
Aren't you the prettiest girl now? You're so pretty. Lovely teeth that don't hurt. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris believes gorgeous George's testes are producing too much testosterone, leading to his dominant and hyperactive behaviour. By castrating George, you take away that testosterone. You make him less answerable to those urges and more focused on being a patient, maybe even obedient dog. But Cassie isn't convinced. And you're worried that it might change his personality? Um, I'm worried that's not going to change his personality. <laughs> I'm worried that he's just going to be the same. Mm. So I can tell you that he will be calmer, mm. but he's still going to be a bulldog. Yeah. If I was to have my two cents here, I would say that for him the best option is the most permanent option is to actually castrate him. Yeah. Oh, you're going to lose your balls. Cassie doesn't seem ready to commit just yet. So um, if we do the surgery, how long he would stay here? How long does it take? So just, just one day. So he's in in the morning and he goes home that night. Oh. We'll probably surprise you just how much he copes with it. Oh, you're going to miss them, are you? You're going to miss them? Hmm? It's a big decision and Cassie has opted to delay George's snip. I'll be honest, unless they actually make the appointment straight away, I'm never too convinced that people are going to carry through with castrating their dogs. With George, he has this social itch that just can't be scratched. No matter how hard he tries, he's always going to end the day disappointed. He's never seen enough people to keep him truly happy. Oh. George, sorry. <laughs> Jumps a lot. So for now, gorgeous George's manhood remains intact. Oh. <laughs> Callie, you're going home, sweetheart. You're going home. Come on, somebody's waiting for you. I know. Later that afternoon, Callie has slept off her sedation and is ready to be reunited with her devoted owner, Alana. I can't wait for Alana to see Callie's new smile. They have been through weeks and weeks of procedures and her devotion and dedication to her dog is quite remarkable. I just can't wait for her to see her little girl at the end of the day. She is going to be so excited. Go, 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 go. Hello, Alma. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello, princess. Hello. Callie. Callie. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your tea. Show me. Oh, look how pretty they are. Oh, Baba. Got a brand new smile. <laughs> Thank huh? you so much. My pleasure. It's really exciting to have been involved with Kelly's treatment. She's now gone from a dog that had a painful mouth to one that's got a beautiful, normal functioning mouth and she'll go on and lead a happy, healthy life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Come you. Come on, Baba. See you, Kelly. Kelly. Yes. She thinks your teeth are beautiful. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. It was definitely worth getting the puppy braces for Callie. Um, we can be happy knowing that she's got a long, happy, healthy life ahead of her with plenty of love from all of us. You know what? It might just be time to catch up with a girl that hasn't been too easy to forget. Chris is on his way to the Lottle Animal Rescue Headquarters in Western Sydney to check up on Zambi, the lion cub. Oh, hello, my not-so-little girl. <laughs> How are you? Wow, what a greeting. <laughs> when I first see Zambi running towards me, I'm thinking, oh, she's grown up. The last time Chris saw little Zambi, she was just four weeks old. This is about as good as it gets, isn't it? The tiny cub was being hand-raised by Donna and Amanda, but needed a surrogate animal mum to help her develop socially. Oh, a bit bigger than last time? Just a little. <laughs> now Zambi is five months old, Chris wants to see just how his left field idea of having Sabi the Labrador raise the cub has worked out. Oh, hello. The whole family's here. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so was she the mother we hoped she would be? Oh, she's been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, she's been toileting her for us. Um, 
She keeps her company, sleeps with her. She's making a growl like a lion. <laughs> See, she has See, picked, up, picked from... up a few things. <laughs> Sabi's a great mum. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for any better. She looks after her, she sleeps with her, and she's very protective of her. She is the best mum ever. Sabi, you gotta say, we took a punt on you, <laughs> huh? We really took a chance on you. We probably asked a lot more of you than one should ever ask of a dog. But you delivered, didn't you? Sure did. Bringing Labradors and lions together was always going to be a calculated risk, but it couldn't have gone better. Should we have a little look at you? Oh. Okay. Just going to go over here. Go over here. <laughs> See, now look what happens. Huh? Now you can't leave with it attached to me. Thank you. Oh, this is a great game, isn't it? Huh? It's a I, perfect game. I knew game. this was going to turn into yeah. fun and games. <laughs> oh, so when you chew it, I don't hear your heart, I just hear your chewing. No. That just sounds good. Oh. good. Yeah. You've been very cooperative now, aren't you? We well, do need to talk about one thing. This may not go down too well, so I'm going to break it to you slowly. It's vaccination time. So these are often the times where they remind you they are a lion. <laughs> <laughs> not a dog, after all. Perfect. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> It's a big relief. She's in great health. But we must say, Sabi's done a wonderful job. Yeah, great. Yeah, she's fabulous. It worked a treat that we could put Zambia with the Labradors. It would have been really hard for a human to take over that role as her mum. <laughs> <laughs> They've just been so good to her. I couldn't have asked for any better. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.